Tennessee Pokemon trading card game regional championship. I'm Kirk Dupes next to Bay, Jeffrey Saran, Rap Saran on the ones and twos for round 10. And I'd be remiss to say if we didn't get Gustavo Wada having a heck of a day, day one, nine and oh. Going to see if he can stay perfect through the 10th round, first round of day two. What do you think? Well, there was a fun little stat that was going around on Hey Fonte last night as far as how many players have actually gone through a tournament in 9-0. It's a very small group there, and Gustavo put himself into that category now. And, yeah, uh, look, at it, look at this here. You know, I think he can actually go to distance with the deck that he has. Uh, great choice. Uh, him, I'm sure, you know, with uh, tournaments of this size, you find yourself with some good matchups. And, uh that's just kind of how it shakes down. Great player, great matchups, good deck. It's a recipe for success, and he's proved it here today. Round 10, he will be playing against Emery Earl, representing Nerd Rage Gaming today. Um, didn't have so bad of a, a day one himself. I believe coming into day two with 24 points. Absolutely. They're 8-1 coming in here, second seed here at the, uh, one of the largest regionals so far. And, yeah, getting going up against Gustavo Wada. 9-0 uh, is going to be a great matchup and great time here uh, in this round 10. We are. The players are sitting there getting getting ready as the slow wheels of the day are churning to life. Mm -hmm. uh, deck lists will be rolling in here shortly. Until then, uh, players don't have their headsets on. So let's talk about what we can expect here in day two. We do have Buzzwole Shrine. We do have Malamar decks. We have Rayquaza. We have that Passimian uh, deck that uh, found its way in a couple of top players' hands, mm -hmm. and they've been able to pilot that to success. Sylveon coming in, coming in today. I believe an Empoleon slid in somewhere. 77 Masters made it to day two. Heck of a field out there. You know, big field there. Go back to your point there. Lots of variations, but also a lot of decks we've seen so far this year between Rayquaza, uh, uh, Bez was Rock, Malamar. But, however, there's a really strong depletion on those Buzz Shrine decks. We haven't seen much success from them uh, at this point in this tournament, and I think that merits to the big target they put on their backs these past couple regionals with their success, and everyone's checked out for it. Everyone's able to handle these Shrine decks now, and we see that in, the, in these stats here. There's not really any Shrine decks that have gotten through into day two. Just uh, a couple, uh, we'll say, peppered across the field. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, uh, you know, people are really afraid of that deck. It is strong. Of course it's strong. However, uh, every strong deck has ways to counter it and kind of uh, subvert its strategy. Uh, we saw it in the form of Empoleon Swamper round one with Drew Benny Kenny. He said, that's my best matchup when we got yep. him, uh, got him in, the, in the booth. Um, when you have single prize attackers that are just quite simply bigger, more powerful, and hit harder than uh, what Buzzwell brings to the table, and if you can mid it, their damage output Pokemon, like Trash Alanche by mitigating your items, yep. like Weavile by mitigating your abilities, um, it really takes a lot of the one two punch that deck can provide. So, uh, with people teched out, it's, uh, it's not surprising that it saw a decline today. Absolutely there. And there's also a lot of different, like, unique decks that are coming to, come to the format right now. We didn't get a chance to see it yesterday, but Buzzrock with the Zygarde GX in there, Zygarde has a very unique effect that it can actually handle mill decks. Is that self-energy acceleration? First attack, double colorless, 50, charge itself with two fighting energy, be able to hit that 130 on all those different, you know, 9GX, 130HP Pokemon. So it's kind of like inherently just its own option to handle this format. With plus with 200 HP, it's no joke. Um, we also got, you know, Malamar spread. We saw that a little bit yesterday in that final round. Uh, while he did not make it because of the ID, uh, or sorry, got to the third game three, didn't get to finish it, there were a few others that squeaked in there. Kind of that spread option, similar to Passimian, but energy is uh, through Malamar versus, you know, Passimian and DCs. Absolutely. We have a bunch of energy accelerating type variants in. Uh, we call those the stage two decks, or what I've been calling the stage two acceleration decks. Uh, Rayquaza Vikavolt. Uh, didn't have a lot of success on camera yesterday. No, no. Uh, however, we de did see a similar style of deck, a rare candy-based energy acceleration deck in uh, Magnazone in the hands of James Arnold, um, who found himself into day two at, I believe, 13th seed with his interesting take with those heat rands um, and using Magnazone, uh, Volkner with the one lightning energy. Yep. Uh, James Arnold, historically a fan of those supporter cards that find you a basic energy. Yep. Um, and has been able to find good success with that. So kind of a, a really nice, diverse field out there today. Um, we're going to try and not rinse, repeat too many matches, but it's, uh, it's impossible not to visit the 9-0 storyline that Gustavo Wada has going on for uh, round 10. And I want to I note here, I want to say there's probably, if I want to take away anything from day one, is very like, the two unique texts that we saw this weekend, or texts or decks. We saw the Passimian spread, and we also got introduced to what we uh, – 
do not call chimichanga anymore. Chimico with that awesome Bella Silence attack. Taco Bella Silence, baby. Taco Bella Silence. You know, ten hits for ten, second energy, and your opponent can play any Pokemon with abilities from their hand. You'd be able to kind of slow down your opponent, set your board up, set your Inkays and Malamars up, and then go, hey, you know what? I'm established now. Let's let loose. And I'm going to get going with my strategy. And we yep. see that a lot of these successful Malamar decks here in day two. Yep. Necrozma GX stepping up, uh, using Prismatic Burst for uh, for big damage. We didn't uh, we didn't get to see the Black Ray GX yesterday. Yep. Um, uh, might come into play today. We hope to we hope to see a couple good. Uh, got to fix my collar. Got to look fresh on camera. It was, it was bugging me. Um, <laughs> got to see a, a big impact GXs. We didn't see too many GX markers being flipped yesterday. No, not really. I think we might see a Tempest GX. Throughout the different rounds. Other than that, it's it was kind of just steady going there. We didn't see any any of the Dongweed and the Crobus GX. We didn't see any, uh, you know, blood uh, really a uh, dangerous Rogue GX. Nothing along those lines. There it was kind of just straightforward. I'm just going to knock it out. <laughs> it's been interesting to see the kind of the regression away from GXs into uh, these kind of theme deck mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, slow grinding up to stage twos, things like that. Yeah. Uh, it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch, and it just shows the ebb and flows of this metagame game and how rapidly it can change from week to week uh, just to adjust to what the perceived metagame is going to be going into any given weekend. Yeah, there's always there's always a new piece to kind of throw into the pie there as far as, you know, our meta. And someone's going to always find something every single week. And, you know, with this new Lost Thunder set coming up, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of turnarounds come. Our, our next regional and some little adjustments to some decks, maybe some new spins, maybe some of the adjustments on old decks. But I love to see the format change a lot and, you know, the variations to you know, throw a little more entertainment out there. Exactly. And uh, a point that uh, John made yesterday, John Kettler made yesterday, is that sometimes the days of old are made new again simply by the fact of what decks become popular mm -hmm. um, at different times. And I think a perfect example of that is Alex Kreckler on, on camera yesterday. He mm -hmm. went to a Buzz Rock deck of old. The only additions to that were uh, were Slugmo Megcargo. Yep. And uh, he's, he used that to great success. I believe he's in the top eight, ten spots yep. uh, in the standings going into day two. So clearly he broke uh, he broke the code when it comes to rehashing old strategies and making them work again. Uh, shined it up real nice, and he found himself in day two. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of our players that we had on stream yesterday, a lot of the winners, you know, did it make it in the day two. So we see the James Arnold. We see uh, – uh, Connor Lavelle with that Zork Control deck earlier, uh, earlier in the rounds there. So um, it's great to see these players having their success and continue on here. And uh, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of different options out there. And I, I'm not even sure who's going to take it at this point, to be honest. A lot, of, lot, lot of different techs out there, a lot of different decks, and I'm not sure what's going to go to distance just yet. Um, it's going to be, of course, a combination of um, good fortune. Mm -hmm. Got to have, got to catch those big breaks in a big tournament. That, that's just the nature of yep. the beast. Uh, solid deck list. And from there, it's all on your shoulders to make the right plays. Absolutely theirs. We, we did get confirmation that the players' headsets are on, so what that means is we will talk a little bit about the deck list maybe uh, before these guys dive right in. Um, I see them setting up. So Gustavo Wada, we did see that on camera yesterday, Malamar Psychic deck. And uh, what does Emery have on his side of the board? Emery's playing um, kind of what we were talking about with um, – Alex Kreckler earlier, and that is Buzz Rock with the Macargo. So while on paper, Psychic Weakness is probably like the like, favorable matchup here. However, if you're playing Buzz Wolf at this big regional, you got to know your outs to Malamar. So I'm curious to how Emery's going to try to pull this off here against Gustavo. Uh, that is a very good point. We see uh, Emery leading with that big Buzz Wolf and a mimic you in the active for Gustavo. Inke on the bench. Uh, definitely going to need a couple copies of that early in the game here. Emery uh, will probably want to target those down uh, if he can and really stem those uh, psychic energy attachments through Malamar's psychic recharge ability. Uh, it's great that he's going first now because he's going to be able to uh, get a rock rip for Diancy here. Rock rip to set up those uh, bloodthirsty eyes to, to bring those in case up before he turn to Malamar's. Uh, but I think the strategy here is let's get our rock rips down. He does play two, two, two line of the, of the list and uh, power through the psychic attacking Pokemon through like your rock GX. We see that rock rough hitting the bench. Um, maybe looking to leverage a turn two bloodthirsty eyes, pull mm -hmm. up an Inke before it can really get to its uh, larger squid-like form in Malamar. All right, so he has a Lily and four fighting energy. So uh, uh, he's good on energy for, for a bit, that's for sure. Hopefully he can hit a Cynthia here uh, to bring those back to the deck. But it looks like Ultra Ball, Diancy. Uh, Diancy is a card he wants to see. Ultra Ball is nice because now he doesn't have to search for it. And he did get another draw supporter for next turn. So he's got, he's got moves to make, which is nice. 
Uh, he's not just completely cold. Uh, I don't know if you recall yesterday, we did have a lily for eight that was just a, a catastrophe. Yep. Um, and the following turn, all of that was Cynthia away. So uh, let's see what Emery decides to find here off of this ultra ball. I'd be shocked to see if uh, one of those fighting energy didn't hit the bin. I'm curious if he would, um, on this ultra ball, if maybe he held it to get the uh, rock rock next, I'm sorry, the lacquer rock next turn. But I think it's an option to get a slugma down and try to get it set up to here so that way he can, that way he can, um, you know, start really establishing his board and start putting his pressure on Gustavo. That's a great point. We see the rescue stretcher was the other card he elected to get rid of there. Going through, taking a look. Slugma coming down for ultra ball. Again, setting up that card selection engine. Um, Absolutely. And he can get what he wants with a lily in hand. That's great. Um, obviously, you can smooth over to the top of your deck, Lily into it, and have immediate access to the card you would like there. And worst case scenario, maybe set up a Guzma for the following turn. So in your natural draw step, you can put that in your hand. We see Emery gets all set up just to pass over to Gustavo. Um, he's got to fe be feeling pretty decent about this uh, this matchup here. You got to feel confident seeing the fighting weakness type Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field. However, uh, Psychic Energy Choice Band, um, going to see a filch here probably to draw two cards, get a little extra love in a hand. Hey, yep. Wow. No no other additional Inkes, uh, just a filch. So he can get a Bloodthirsty Eyes here and knock out the Inke. He's in an incredible spot right now with, with nothing else for really for Gustavo to respond to. We see uh, Field Blower. We're going to hit the Choice Band that was put on the Mimikyu and a Lily. And the only reason he Field Blowered that off is simply to get right more at the top, like top card was the full art, like your Rock G. And an Ultra Ball just to tease it a little bit extra there. So definitely here is probably going to be a, uh, you know Ultra Ball, get them a cargo. You have Kukui in hand to uh, be able to smooth over and grab a card in the following turn. Uh, but right on cue, Bloodthirsty Eye. It's going to bring up that Inke. This is exactly what Emery wants to be doing against these po these uh, psychic Pokemon is let's knock out the engine first so those big psychic Pokemon seem a little less scary on the back end. Absolutely here. So we're going to see the Ultra Ball here. He's going to definitely grab the Macargo and smooth over. Probably, honestly, going to smooth over to that Guzma you were mentioning earlier there because at this point, if he can't streamline numerous Inkes on that bench, Emery's just going to sit here and knock them out one by one through either Bloodthirsty Eyes or Guzma. Ultra Ball is throwing away a Baby Buzzwool and uh, Fighting Energy. And we're going to see what Emery selects here. And on cue, you, that Mag Cargo you were just talking about, he will have Smooth Over available to him. I believe one of the last cards in his hand is a Kikui. So that's good for the second turn, uh, for the following turn, excuse mm -hmm. me, where he'll be able to Smooth Over and Kikui that directly into his hand if he wants it. Yep, so there you go. He looks like, oh, he's eyeing a Cynthia instead there. Uh, and I, I got to respect that. I mean, right, right now he only has Fighting Energy Kakui in his hand, so he wants to establish that draw. So uh, I guess that mute point to where do you take the aggression and take out the Inkes one by one, uh, or do you want to set up your draw? I guess he's assuming here that Gustavo probably won't bench another Inke, so I want to make sure I can draw and keep proceeding my board state. We see Emery put the Cynthia on top, or will in just a moment. And he's going to go ahead and announce Jet Punch, 50 on the active, 30 on the bench. So even and right now, if you have the Guzma off. play, you can do a double knockout for the game potentially, especially with the with, with Gustavo's anemic board, uh, board state. He's not doing much right now. That's a great point. We see an acro bike. A skateboard hits the bin. I'm not sure if a skateboard was what he had there. Um, Malamar, okay, that, that, that's a start. That's At a least start. it protects it a little bit on the bench from a jet punch. And a Cynthia giving Gustavo six cards, that means that the seven he had in hand, we were just no bueno, not getting him anywhere. No, nothing at all here. So uh, I think I, and then we're going back to the point now of uh, Emery putting that Cynthia on top of his deck there. Uh, we can bet you that's probably the better play now, given that Gustavo did have a supporter in his hand. I mean, he's just uh, playing against the odds, right? I mean, the car. <laughs> Gustavo had nine cards in hand, or mm -hmm. some, or, or just short uh, of nine. And the, the chances were pretty high that he had actions to make that would have made his uh, potential Guzma winning play uh, mm -hmm. not as good. So the conservative route, definitely get the Cynthia, set himself up, and uh, you know just, again, try and compound this advantage uh, that he has because Gustavo stumbled. So we do see uh, another Inke come down. Mysterious Treasure going to grab another Inke. Uh, oh, we're going to let loose. I actually like that a lot because, you know, Gustavo knows he just moved over, put what he wants to top of his deck. So disrupt the strategy, let loose, get rid of those cards. And essentially for Gustavo, here. what allows him to do is play um, 
a second supporter this turn, right? Mm -hmm. There are decks out there that just play Judge. Mm -hmm. So Gustavo getting to play the Cynthia, gets six cards, plays his entire hand down, and now he's going to get four more. And with the added bonus of disrupting Emery on his side of the board, to getting rid of whatever that potential smooth over card was, but also he could he could end up with those four fighting energy we saw at the start of the game, yep. and then he's uh, he's now he's on the back foot because his setup is stopped. The funny thing about this as well is that while Gustavo is only getting four cards, he also has Mimikyu to active still to filch to get an additional two, so he's 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 netting an extra plus two cards here versus Emery only getting to four. Uh, off the four cards, Gustavo gets an acro bike. Uh, can't quite see what he discarded, but a Deoxys will hit the bench. Another energy coming down. Are we going to see a, a jet punch? A jet from punch Mimikyu. for 60 damage on the Buzzwall GX and applying pressure to that Lycanroc GX at the end right there. Draw off the top for Emery is a Brooklet Hill. Brooklet Hill will come down. Beast, uh, Beast Ring in hand, and I believe I saw an Acro Bike there as well. We got double Acro Bike for sure, so he has he has pieces there to combo with Smooth Over. Uh, might be getting a supporter right away as well. Uh, two combo down. We do see a Brooklet here for the Baby Buzz, however. Baby Buzz will maybe a little bit of insurance uh, for that four, four prize turn so he can uh, use a big sledgehammer, do some work. Brooklet Hill filling up that bench for Emery, getting him the resources he needs. We're going to get a smooth over here. As you mentioned, Acro Bike in hand. So whatever he selects, he will have the opportunity to put it in his hand, provided that the second card isn't better. And I can't imagine it would be. Did I just see what I thought I saw? He plays two Ace Aurora in his list. You typically don't see that in these Buzzwell type decks. But I like the, the, the thought of it because between Macargo smooth over and Acro Bikes, you can essentially get that at any time. So if these, these heavy uh, HP GX Pokemon, your Buzzwell GX at 190 HP, if that's not getting taken down right away, you can just ace the roll and reset your opponent's side of attacking. Imagine this. You're playing against a Zorak deck, and all you want to do is chain your Buzzwolves, because you can't get one hit knocked out. Mm -hmm. Chain your Buzzwolves to just jet punch and just stack 60 worth of choice band, you know, 120 damage, and you can just heal them and rotate through two Buzzwell yep. GX. Uh, with a couple ace Arola, that's that's backbreaking. We do see, I believe it was a Cynthia on top. Acrobike will put it in his hand if he wants it. Trying to uh, narrow, put his hand size down just a bit there. Decided where to put the choice band at before he does his Cynthia here off of the Acrobike. Uh, like, and again, try to give him a fresh start here. Cynthia and a Buzzwell GX going to go to the discard. Of course, that's Cynthia going to hand. Can't be string quite yet, so just a Cynthia. Six cards on their way for Emery Earl. So we want to note also that in the early turns, he did discard his only rescue stretcher, so that Buzzwell GX going to the bin will not be returning to the game. He does play three copies, however, so as long as uh, one of them isn't tucked out. Oh. Three copies of Buzzwell GX, as long as one of those Pokemon aren't tucked into the, uh, the prizes, he might have access to that streaming jet punch play. However, I don't really think that's how this game is shaping up right now. No, you probably want to avoid uh, at least the GX Buzzwell. Um, because of the second weakness there and his two prizes. You see Gustavo already setting up his side. He wants to go to 90x route. He doesn't want to put any of his um, Don Wing Necrozma, none of his, uh, 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 sorry, my Shadow GX or, uh, any, or Necrozma GX on the board. He wants to keep his streamline, keep it, keep the, keep Emery uh, honest here and make him work hard for the sixth prize win. Well, you know, Deoxys, three energy, 120. When, when you're hitting for weakness, it's 240. That's an easy knockout on any of the Buzzwool. Yep. Uh, Lycanroc GX threatening a little bit here uh, for Danger Sog. Maybe some Claw Slashes on some Malamars. But with just two energy attached and announcing Jet Punch, stacking damage on that Malamar, it's on Gustavo to make moves. And the Judge flying in there, grab your prize, my man. You earned it. So I like the pressure he's putting on that Malamar uh, for sure to t at least take out one versus Jet Punching to maybe set up another one. We do know his Buzzle GX is going to go down and probably here soon. So try to get the you know full, you know, Max, uh, max effort out of this buzzwall to take the knockouts where you can. We do see a Lily back up to six. Double Psychic Recharge on a Deoxys. And we do have the Marshadow, Let Loose Marshadow in so the active. 20, 40, 70 times to 140 plus that 60. Knockout. KO on the buzzwall. Buzzwall GX. And now Emery's uh, staring down a fairly potent single prize attacker. And on his side of the board, all that he's got built up right now is a Lycanroc GX. However, 
We're, we're in sledgehammer time. We're in sledgehammer. Now. We're in sledgehammer time right now. So, and, and you know, right now there are no additional attackers to Gustavo's hand. While he has a skateboard in Malamar, so he is just one bench Pokemon away and be able to second recharge and reload to retaliate on this Buzzwool. We don't see it currently, but I'm sure that's on his mind right now to uh, solidify his strategy here. Gustavo also operating at very low resources, still has a full grip there, so can't imagine uh, that he'll find himself with a dead hand going into his next turn, especially after taking two prizes. The onus is on Emery now. How am I going to navigate these waters? These psychic attackers can hit pretty hard, and I do think that Rockruff is a, is a strong, strong path to, to start. Get, get to those Lycanrocks GXs, maybe tackle down some Malamars, make the psychic attackers a little less impressive for what your heavy hitters are in your deck, which are psychic weak fighting Pokemon. The tough thing here, though, is unlike um, like uh, like Rock and Zorark, you know, you don't have access to DCE in these types of decks. So he's going to have to manually attach three energy uh, to attack with Lycanroc GX. While you can Dangerous Rogue for just one, uh, two fighting, if you want to get to that Claw Slash after you use GX attack, you're going to have to get three energy on board. That's a great point. Um, some the someone's PC crew uh, for a while at the start of uh, League Cups really advocated playing one or two copies of DCE in your Buzzwool uh, mm -hmm. Lycanroc deck for multiple purposes. One, it helps with Claw Slash. Two, it's a manual attachment that you can put on a Mag Cargo for Retreat. Mm -hmm. So uh, Orangaroo as well. So it offers Buzzwool as well. So it offers that kind of option as, uh, on top of just the added bonus of being a, a faster way to get your Lycanroc online. Absolutely there. So Beast Ring, two active Buzz to set up the attack with Sledgehammer, and now it gives him an option to attach additional energy to the Rock River Bench. I like that versus atta attaching to the Lycanroc GX because it spreads your options, right? You already have two op uh, energies on your Lycanroc GX. You only need one more to, take a, uh, to do any of his attacks. And now you want to set up an additional rock ref so for the later game. Emery going to see six off the Cynthia. So Gustavo will be able to change gears and start hitting with his big GX attackers that can take one-hit knockouts on Lycanroc GXs. How is Emery going to stem that uh, as he's trying to wade through the psychic Pokemon with his psychic weak fighting attackers? Well, the great thing here is that uh, Gustavo needs to have a full bench to function. So... Um, Dangerous Rogue is going to be in full effect regardless of what he puts out there. Uh, the big thing here here is to be able to attack with the Lycanroc and not get a return KO. But that 30 damage from that Mimikyu copycat jet punch is going to come into effect here later on when we see the Prismatic Burst come down and, uh, you know, have to only need three energy to do it. We do see a smooth over. We're going to slam that card on top. And he won't be seeing that one until next turn. Sledgehammer knockout. Take his prize. They're both at four. We see Let Loose Marshadow jumping into the active again. <laughs> Third Psychic Malamar. Gustavo just needs an attacker now. We do see the Mysterious Treasure and uh, it's like a Marshadow and an Ultra Ball. So you use the discards the Marshadow. And we're going to start, I don't know, we're seeing a cross or another Deoxys. Probably another Deoxys would be the option here. Uh, but I don't see it just yet in his deck. Maybe he can. Uh, maybe he's thinking to get out of these sledgehammer turns, out of these beast ring turns, because uh, he does have a Guzman in hand. He can get a uh, a big GX attacker, take a knockout on the Lycan Rock that's there, mm. and uh, and get out of all of that kind of at the same time. Gustavo says, "No, sir, I'm nine and zero. I know what I'm doing." Deoxys hits the bench. Absolutely, he's gonna, he's gonna just go uh, trade for trade right now, and probably just really save his GX for when uh, Emery presents his, so that way he's always the one step ahead in this chess matchup. Deoxys will hit the bench. Gustavo, three psychic recharges available to him if he wants them, and I imagine he does as that is the order of the day here for the psychic squids. Yeah, probably going to definitely see a power blast this turn, but the only thing is he's going to have to have an attachment to the active Marshadow to retreat uh, to be able to uh, use that Deoxys here. So he does have a Guzma that will allow him to switch if he wants it. Um, and uh, just as Cynthia comes down. So maybe looking to, to maybe find an escape board, find a manual attachment. Gustavo's deck has plenty of options. It is literally built to rotate through attackers. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's promoted that Marshadow more than once this game already. So he, he has full confidence of its ability to rotate. Manual attachment there, psychic recharge coming. And I, I kind of like this, this route too because it keeps putting second energies in the discard pile versus bringing up the Malamar to a skateboard. So you're all constantly now attaching, retreating, 
re, re, uh, recharging your psychic recharge. And then you just load up your next attacker. And we do see, I believe it is Power Blast, 120 discard and energy. But uh, Buzzwell says, I don't like all that, all that mental gymnastics, all that psychic action. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take 240 and uh, find myself in the discard. This is the great thing about Gustavo here is that when he brought the Deoxys down, seeing that the only option for Emery to take a KO is through Dangerous Row GX right now. Claw Slash is not good. Oh, Claw Slash, sorry. Diancy will get the knockout with Claw Slash. However, um, it's just almost like you're presenting the GX there and you're wasting it on the 90X there. Not really advancing as much as you want to right now. You want, you were hoping to Gustavo to bench down in the cross GX, Martial GX, whatever is there to kind of advance your prize, the prize count here. But as far as prize race goes, Gustavo's in the lead. Energy switch over to the rock roof on bench. Interesting. He's eyeing up a play. Uh, he, we do have that one copy of Acerola in hand. Okay, so we see a beast energy. Does he have Guzma in hand to bring up another Malamar and then knock out the Malamar on bench? Acerola. Acerola, here we go. Lycanroc comes up, and he will have uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes available now because that rock roof on the bench has been sitting there for a turn. It's, it's, it's ready to level up here into... Like and rock. So 30, 60, 80 going to be coming down on his Deoxys, knocking out the Malamar. It can also oh, knock out no, a Marshadow. No, new Bloodthirsty Eyes. Yep, yeah, bad double there. And this is the term we needed. This is the term we needed. Bloodthirsty Eyes on the Marshadow, taking a KO, and taking a KO on the Malamar events. So this is a good turn of events here. Is there resistance on the Marshadow? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, it looks like there's resistance on Marshadow just because like it is a we ghost did, type. Just like we didn't see it in the booth. Uh, Gustavo knows what his cards read, and it looks like that Jet Punch after resistance goes to 60 rather than ah, 80. Yes. And what a sad state of affairs for Emery. That uh, was a turn he needed and just, that, just missed out. He just just a little oversight, similar to yesterday in round eight, that Mimikyu doesn't have psychic weakness. Yes, yes. Uh, Marshadow is fighting resistant, and sometimes just the color of the card dissuades you from what is at the bottom of the text. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And here we go, manual attachment to Marshadow. <laughs> Two psychic recharges, only needs one. Yeah, it's uh because that, because of that little misstep there that uh, uh we did we uh, that Emery had right there is, it's now going to be probably best chance as a scoop here now. It's going to be a knock on his Buzzle G X three power blast, um, and of course yeah Emery was not able to get to that last two prizes there and going to be looking at a game too. Yep, Emery should pick up his cards. A little bit of dawdling right now. No, I mean, there's not much going on. Psychic Recharge number two on Mar Shadow. Power Blast for 240 knockout. One prize left. Emery comes up. His hope here is what, to fade another Psychic attacker or one of the real attackers in Gustavo's deck? Um, yeah, the only thing I see here is if he has a, if he has a way to uh, disrupt his hand through a Judge or a Mar Shadow of his own. I don't see any of his list, so... Um, Gustavo's hand's pretty big now. I do see a nest ball, so I think at this point uh, Gustavo has a chance to be able to get to the the cross with GX and uh, get the final prize that way. We see an Ultra Ball throwing away a Slugma and a Tate and Liza. Lycanroc GX will come down. However, he is not using Bloodthirsty as ability. Cynthia for turn. That this is time off the clock, Jeff. Um, if Gustavo has any attacker on his side of the board. He can peg down Orangaroo, Mag Cargo, Deancey, one of the squishier things, yep. trying to hide out on the bench. And uh, we're going to game two. He's a fairly large hand, um, so I'm assuming he probably had, I know for sure we have the Nest Ball, I know for sure we have the Necroz with GX in there. So um, if, that's, if that's the route he wants to go. Even Mysterious Treasure, we see there at the top. So pretty much it's just getting to the Guzma or just want to take out this uh, active like Rock GX. He has, to, he has to pivot through Mar Shadow to really pull up whatever he wants afterwards through the second recharge he set up. And it's, kind of, it's just kind of just seeing who he wants to take out. <laughs> we see uh, Brooklet Hill for Emery. Looks at his deck, takes, uh, takes a quick gander, and then says, all right, smooth over. I'm going to take a use Brooklet Hill, figure it out, smooth over. Effectively the same uh, order of operations either way. Gets him set a card, puts it on top. It's got to be a good one. Yeah, I'm not sure what else he could do right now. Uh, I mean, he's going to get the knockout here in Deoxys. And with Gustavo's hand, I mean, Emery not knowing the knowledge there. He doesn't even have – yeah, I mean, he's going all in on like a Rock GX at this point. He's going to have to try to take three prizes the hard way. 
uh, through all non GXs, and I don't think he's going to be able to get there. If Gustavo has access to any of his big GX attackers. There it is. So if he has Guzman in deck, and just get one Pokemon here. Now Gustavo's just going to just kind of, all right, well, you're not picking up here, so I will go through my emotions. Rescue Stretcher going to find himself a Malamar. Psychic Recharge, number three online. And there's Necrozma GX, as we mentioned. Triple Psychic Recharge, target down a Deancey, and we have a very overqualified Prismatic Burst <laughs> knocking out Deancey Prism Star. Uh, he dropped the hammer on that uh, unfortunate Deancey right now. 90 HP is uh, very easy to, easy to take down. Sorry, 120 HP. <laughs> Deancey going to the, to the lost zone like a Street Fighter KO. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the diamond's falling down off at the bottom, just just drifting away. It looks like it looks like the end of an Avengers movie. It's pretty bad. Well, Gustavo found himself a pretty solid matchup to keep his string, uh, his uh, win streak alive. Um, game one of round one of day two, in the bag. Needs one more to be ten and zero here in Memphis, Tennessee. He's well on his way to make to the to that top eight spot right now. Um, every Saturday now, we, I think I want to see a little bit more aggression as far as getting the Rock Rose out early and applying that pressure through Bloodthirsty Eyes, taking out those Inkes, because um, Gustavo wasn't right off the bat getting there. Uh, not, until he hit the, not until he had that Cynthia to really get his ball rolling there, but um, definitely want to start him working the like, Rock GXs through Bloodthirsty Eyes and take those Inkes out one at a time so that Gustavo can't chain the Oxes. The cross with GX, Mimikyu, whatever it may be. We had Emery kind of trying to employ that game plan, but once you get to a point where you have to deal with the psychic attackers, not the psychic uh, energy recycling engine, um, this Buzzwool deck is, is really fighting from underneath, and it's very, very difficult for it to come back because it's dealing with the immediate problem, mm -hmm. but not the cause of the problem. Yep. So... Emery gonna try and uh, try and chase these uh, these Inkes a little bit uh, more aggressively. I think a Beast Energy would be a great start to really ramp up that Jet Punch. Well, we do see a Beast Energy, but a Slugma in the active. However, so one thing you could do also because you know unless you use the GX Pokemon, it's gonna be tough to get to that KO range for Lycanroc GX. You have two Ace Rolls in your deck, so if you can just, while it is a little hard to manual attach, if you can get those Bloodthirsty Eyes going early, Quick Dangerous Rogue and just chain through Lycan Rocks for a little bit, you may be able to get there. We see a Deoxys start for Gustavo. Uh, you know, that's a that's a pretty resolute Pokemon when it's looking down a Jet Punch. And two uh, two just manually attach uh, two manual attachments. We'll be able to start doing some real damage on a, a Psychic Week Pokemon. Uh, Acrobike is going to lead Emery Ooh. off here. That's a really tough call there. Escape Rope or Acerola. What's going to the bin here? Escape Rope. A I think you got to keep Acerola. We don't see any pal pad in his list, so he, and he's going to definitely need those to help him go to distance here. Ultra Ball pulled to the front. We're probably going to see a turn one Lily here um, because of what his hand might consist of. So Acerola going down and probably the fighting energy. And we're probably going to see a Lele for Lily here to get that fresh uh, drop the eight cards. So we see off the acro bike, it didn't really matter. Both cards ended up getting <laughs> into the discard. Um, Emery does have the switch in his hand. Which is nice for him. He'll be able to get, uh, you know, his 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 Pokemon don't have a lot of mobility, mm -hmm. so uh, they're a little bit chunkier. He's going to need that uh, that switch effect to help him out, and that's going to be nice for him to get uh, a Buzzwool in the active or uh, some form of early pressure uh, to ch kind of chase Gustavo's Inkes mm -hmm. in the early stages of this game. So we're going to see Lele Fleur here. He's doing a little count here, a little, little bit of a preventative maintenance, see what's going on in his deck, and uh, hopefully here he hit that, you know. Like, do we want to see a Buzzwool GX right now um, to apply the pressure? There's no EKs on board. Um, I'm not sure here. I don't know if you want to go through Baby Buzz with the Beast Energy and just two hit, two shot this Deoxys, or go straight through and get the Buzzwool GX down. Well, clearly uh, Emery electing to let Lily be his guide. He's going to play that down, and we'll see exactly what Pokemon he's uh, – maybe maybe he's letting the, the cards read themselves. He's going to draw <laughs> back up to eight. Whatever is presented to him, he's going to adjust and make decisions based off that. And I think that's a great point. No Pokemon off that draw here. Do see an Acrobike, additional Lily here. So No ball search cards. Uh, I believe that is a Lily, not a Brooklet Hill. So Brooklet Hill off the top, he's going to need that one to start getting his fighting Pokemon down. 
You're fortunate enough to get that off the active right there because as you were saying, there wasn't much going there as far in the form of ball search or even Pokemon in general there. It was a Kukui energy, additional Lily there. So we're going we're gonna to see here what he decides on, whether it's going to be the Buzzwell GX or the Baby Buzz. We do see Buzzwell GX maybe finding that Guzma Beast Energy on an Inke because he knows Gustavo is going to try and get some on the board. Mm -hmm. That's that's inevitable. Um, as we mentioned, it's just how well Emery can chase those Inkes down. If he lucks out, Gustavo only benches one, and he can set up a Beast Energy Deancey Guzma play yep. and take a KO, then he's in great shape here. Absolutely there. Pass on to Gustavo's side here, and right off the bat, Mysterious Treasure going to grab that Inke, get, get him on the board. Got to get the gang all here to make sure this deck works all the way it should. Inke you know, does hit the bench. Mysterious Treasure putting a Psychic Energy in the discard right where he wants that. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a similar effort as it was game one to where it's only one Inke, and then the following turn was a Cynthia. However, he has his first turn this time. Um, so... If Ember can hit, you know, kind of dodge bolt here and uh, Gustavo does not get any more Inkes on board, we can see that Bloodthirsty Eyes play coming the following turn. Bloodthirsty Eyes is nothing to sneeze at. They used to be uh, a supporter ability in a Lysander, mm -hmm. um, kind of replaced by Guzma in, in these days now. However, such a strong ability since that supporter rotated that people play it in their deck. Acrobike, two cards coming, Lily in the discard, Inke in the hand, Mimikyu on the bench. So we do have the additional EK here, but no energy going to being attached there, and only one in the discard right now. So, um, you know, a little bit of a little bit of light, you know, peeking through the clouds here for Emery right now. Uh, but I think we think still the strategy should be let's target down these EKs before they become Malamars. So Beast Energy down, and he's got to be eyeing I down think a he way has a to Guzma try to get third card from the. Yep, there it is. So if he has Dancy Prism Star. Let's make that double check coming down. At least he's going to be able to start jet punching these Inkes. Um, and what's what's real nice is 30 on a, the benched Inke means that it can uh, eat a, a Malamar can eat that jet punch and, and get knocked out. Absolutely there. So n nice little setup potential here. And there is a Diancy right on cue. And we're going to be able to see a Guzma jet punch knockout and set up uh, for Ember right now. So a, a little bit of a, a brisk start for him, fortunately. And uh, if Gustavo does not have a strong response here, he'll be in a great spot going forward. We see Emery thumbing through his cards, <laughs> tapping that Guzma, eyeing the switch. Kikui back to the front. He's got some options. Uh, credit to Emery for going through them. And he elects to just, as we mentioned, aggressively chase those Inkes. We're going to see a Jet Punch knockout. Again, if he decides to put the 30 on the Inke on the bench, he will have the Jet Punch uh, on it if he can pull it into the active. Yeah. Elects to soften up that uh, Deoxys. Rescue Stretcher buying back that Inke really quick. Uh, two Stretcher in Gustavo's list for this exact reason. Yep, you know, you want to you keep bringing it back there. There's a, the main strategy of players is to take the Inkes and Malamars one by one, but you can reassert yourself through Rescue Stretcher. What's interesting to note here is if Gustavo fans uh, a Malamar and if Emery had put the 30 damage on the Inke on the bench yep. uh, he would have had another potential double knockout turn on both Inkes with a jet punch and we, that, that would have been a heck of a turn. I, 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 I agree with you there. I think the, I think the, the jet punch uh, uh, effect should have gone to the other Inke there for that reason you're mentioning there as far as regardless of what happens to the Inke there will be a potential double knockout play but three squids out right now and a let loose all cards going back into the deck. Both players drawing four. In this trading card game, we call that a judge. <laughs> Marshadow definitely probably one of the cards of the week. Uh, cards of the week right now. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of different matches last uh, yesterday uh, between the Zorak decks, Rayquaza decks. Being able to just you know pivot your opponent's hand away and uh, just take them out of games at times. So as you can give them, you can give them like you know four solid cards, but a lot of times you can get them four dead cards and really just establish a board. Turn one let loose reminds me a lot of uh, turn one gets it expanded. Obviously not as oppressive, but yep. uh, the results can certainly ring the same. Uh, Acrobike off of Gustavo's let loose in those four cards seems to be kind of what he gets every single time. Just gets to uh, get those right back. Interesting decision there was deciding between Choice Man and Malamar. Uh, maybe a little bit harder than we see from here because we can't quite see his hand. However, he likes to choose the Malamar. 
get uh, get one of those online. Psychic Recharge onto that Marshadow. As we know, Gustavo likes to promote that and hard retreat it into one of his stronger Psychic-based attackers. So we do see a Lycanroc GX, Fighting Energy coming down to Rock Ruff, and a Tate and Liza. So you can't switch and Bloodthirsty Eyes that Malamar and do a Dangerous Rogue knockout if, if that's the route he wants to take. Um, but I'm not sure you want to use your GX on that, op on that there. You already have two Malamars out. Interesting. Okay. So he's going to go for a knockout with Jet Punch and then hopefully or potentially set up extra damage on either the Deoxys or the Malamar or even an EK. Even in Inke, again, if, if, I mean, if he had put 30 damage down, he'd be able to take out that Malamar with a jet punch and, and soften up the Deoxys again, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's interesting what those micro decisions can kind of snowball into. And I'm not saying he made the incorrect choice. I'm just saying there's so many options out there, and yep. there's so many different ways that these games can shell out, you know, with – draw support shuffling your hand back in and you can whiff like that happens all the time you can obviously never predict that uh but here we are in a situation where emery does elect to pull up an inke gonna get a knockout which is which is fine as we mentioned target down the inke mm -hmm. that that's that's part kind of step one however that extra 30 damage can really be put in some impactful places and emery needs to make sure that is exactly where it needs to be. It's definitely uh, the little things that sometimes take the biggest effect at times, especially in these kind of uh, trading card games to where every decision counts in the long run, whether it's, whether it's where your energy attachment is, what you smoothed over. Uh, it, it's every little piece, you know, adds up in the end. We do see a smooth over here from Emery. He gets that uh, mag cargo off his of Cynthia. Interesting choice. Was that an acro bike on the smooth over? I'm not sure what the thought process is here on that. Um, maybe he's out of the resource supporters to get to uh, like any draw cards there. But however, you could just perhaps he's setting up not this smooth over, uh, but, but his next, next turn smooth over. smooth over. So he can say, "Okay, Gustavo, what are you doing? What did you play? What am I actually going to need?" And then I make like sure that. he has a way to get that into his hand. Deciphering here, where that jet punch additional 30 damage is going to go. I, I think like now you're priced into putting it on the Deoxys. Personally, that's what I think because you went there first. And nothing, nothing hits the Deoxys for, I believe it's 90. Yeah, and, but at the same time, too, Deoxys is something that um, is going to probably come up this next turn and take the knockout is what Gustavo was setting up. Attachment, double second recharge, will be able to power up that power blast on Deoxys. We do see the fighting resistant Marshadow <laughs> step up in front of this big buzz will carry a beast energy. And I'd be remiss to say if that wasn't uh, just there to, taunt Emery a little bit, and then fade back. Uh, oh, Gustavo looks like he's electing to scoop this game, too, right now. Uh, maybe he had too many Malamar's prize to really get going here. Uh, Emery's board might have been just, just a tad too much for him to catch up with and sees that the game one will take a little while. That one was getting to a very timely point, and Gustavo wants to win here. He doesn't want to tie. Absolutely. So um, kind of a, a, a flash-in-the-pan finish there. It just kind of – Turned to dust in front of us. Gustavo knows, obviously, has critical information that uh, we might not be working with here, and he certainly knows what he's doing. That being said, you have to tip your cap to the kid. He's, here's, he, he's here to win. He's not here to take draws. He's not here to let stuff linger. Clearly, the man is 9-0, no draws. Earned himself a victory in every round of day one. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to game three, and he's looking to win. Absolutely here. And he gets to go first also. So we are probably as a good chance of seeing that uh, play to where, um, you know, Marshado turn one, let loose and really just disrupt Emory side of the field. Gustavo being on the play here for game three is such a massive advantage. And Emory has to match whatever Gustavo sets up almost guaranteed with a Buzzwool GX in the active, Beast Energy Deancey, and mm -hmm. take Inke knockouts. He's got to, and he did that really well this game too. And if he's able to keep that pace up here, Gustavo's hand looking really bleak a little bit. Maybe I missed the supporter there, but it wasn't the strongest. Um, this could be a good chance for uh, Emery to really, really get back ahead in this game. But just a Slugma on his side. Slugma on his side, however. Oh, and a Rock Ruff. I do see a Mag Cargo, if I'm not mistaken, was in the <laughs> middle of his hand. <laughs> Gustavo uh, flipped over Emery's card because he's ready to get the ball rolling. He's like, all right, put your prize out, but I'm going to go ahead and start. Put, move your card. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going first. Acro by Guzma. Gustavo doing his best Usain Bolt impression. He's on the <laughs> sprint here. He wants to get to the finish line and get himself a W. And Emery says, eh, 
I'm going to do everything I can to, to keep you from crossing that He has the gold Pumas on, full sprint, full stride all the way in, trying to get these in-case on board <laughs> to establish his strategy here. And there's the Marshado we were speaking of earlier, just to, you know, disrupt your opponent. Because typically in, in these situations here, Gustavo has been banking fairly well off the let loose versus his opponents here. So the strategy here, let's just even get the one Inke. Um, Ultra Ball, probably for an additional one, and let loose and get Ultra to his Ball lilies. Ultra Ball pitching of note and a skateboard and a Malamar. His first search, you know he was double-checking, making sure he has at least three other Malamar in that deck yeah. before he's just throwing those away all willy-nilly, or at least doing a rescue stretcher check. But here we have let loose. Both players going to shuffle up, draw four. That's a supporter card that we like to call. Judge! Thank you. Ripping four off the top. Emery Earl going to hope it's uh, four good ones because he hasn't had a turn yet in game three. And Gustavo hoping that he's just running off fumes over there. He draws maybe four basic fighting energy and just gets to, to, to tear Emery's board apart. We will see here four cards for Gustavo. Acro bike doesn't have it this time. Doesn't have it this time here. I'm not sure what's in his hand. Did we see a Lily, uh, energy, anything at all? And, yep, energy to Marshadow <laughs> using the usual strategy here and bringing up that resistant Marshadow <laughs> to the front. Fighting resistant Marshadow on the ones and twos in the active Slugma there. <laughs> B-string, not what Emery wants to see. However, Slugma uh, in the active right now. That's not actually not the card I wanted to say. Clearly, you could tell by the way I paused there. <laughs> Buzzle GX hits the bench. Fighting energy and a Cynthia. So, uh, let loose, not as impactful maybe as Gustavo was hoping it would be. However, because of this Cynthia, Gustavo does know both those Inkes on the bench are safe. Yep, absolutely there. And, you know, yeah, not enough going on right now. Emery side hopefully here hits a couple extra additional cards here. Hits the switch, Diancy maybe. Uh, while it won't knock out, resistance, uh, we can still start establishing that uh, bench damage on those Inkes, start setting up KOs. So what you get to do is Jet Punch, Act of Marshadow, hit an Inke on bench. Then the following turn, if those, those do not turn uh, Malamars, he can Bloodthirsty Eyes one up to take a double knockout. Emery kind of would like to find his, his uh, copy of Escape Rope here, uh, simply because if he does manage to get the Buzzle in the active, Jet Punching into a Marsh Shadow is maybe the unsexiest Jet Punch uh, that he could he could claim right now. So it's more, Yeah, it's more like a Jet Tap, <laughs> jet, jet, jet Jab maybe, I don't know, but um, Jet Flick. Uh, try <laughs> we're, we're stretching here. Jet Sneeze. <laughs> Uh, so, two nest balls coming down. Board going to continue to develop on Emery's side. Just on the rock rock, the second rock rock needs to come down and maybe that Diancy. Uh, but I'm not sure how he feels about keeping the Slugma active. Like, does he want to put an additional one down that guarantees Macargo? Um, probably rock rough and uh, so another Slugma here, just to kind of guarantee that he's going to have what he needs the following turn. To your point. Rockruff, Deancey, both jumping into play, ready for action. Emery going to shuffle up after both of those nest balls are now done being taken care of. And I'm not convinced that he has a way to get that Slugma out of the active. And I'm pretty sure Gu uh, Gustavo is going to be content setting up his board next turn. Um, what, what would the dream be? Malamar, Malamar, Mamalar, Mamalar, Mamalar. Mamalar has been called. Malamar. Malamar. Psychic I mean, reach. I mean, he doesn't have the resources for that. But. I mean, honestly, double Malamar, energy, and Guzma. If he has the uh, psychic energy, he's already in the discard pile. That's a Guzma knockout on a Buzzwell GX. That's a tall order for a card, for, for, for a hand with exactly four cards in it. We you are talking about Mr. 9-0, Gustavo Wada. That's true. So that could have happened earlier in the <laughs> I rounds. mean, what was it? Was it uh, yesterday, Gustavo, just game one? Turn two, three or four Malamars yep. in play. It was all in his hand. It was just kind of like a like domino effect. The GX prismatic burst. Where this is what we're doing here. Sometimes, sometimes you know, you, you, you get a little bit of a you know toward rubs off on you a little bit. Sometimes you get a little bit of love to where the top decks are heavily in your favor. As we mentioned, you need that for those nine and no starts. Emery, oh. Ultra Ball pitching a Kikui and mystery card that we missed because we were chatting. And we're gonna see that Mag Cargo no, jump just in there. Yeah. My cargo in hand, smooth over, ready to go next turn, provided this isn't a knockout. We see a rescue stretcher, which means that Malamar in the discard can be primed for action. All right, Mimikyu coming out. 
We're going to see a filch yet again to set up his board. I love it. Gustavo really proving that you can use all of the resources in this deck to positive value. And again, proving that Mimikyu isn't just there for that copycat attack. Nope, you can definitely, it, it, it kind of mirrors, in a sense, kind of the, the strategy that Chimico brings to these other Malamar variants where you bring it up and you have it there to either stall or draw through cards while you establish your board. So Gustavo empty-handed, which is why he went for that uh, Mimikyu. That Filch is the only two cards he has to work with on his following turn, of course, with the third being added by his draw step. Emery has to feel a little bit of excitement with that. Absolutely. Grabbing a switch right now. Going to be able to... Uh, I'm not sure what his other card is right now. Uh, he may have been able to get an Acrobite to draw that um, switch there. Uh, I would assume so, since that he's going for the smooth over for four, he's playing the Cynthia. All right. Opt to do Kukui for two. Switch. Going to be played. 30, 50, 70. Jet Punch. Resistance. No resistance. Oh, no resistance. Not on Mimikyu. 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 Wrong Mimikyu. M. That's Marshadow. Here we go. We're learning what cards say as the as they are played out here. 30 on the Inke, solid choice if he oh, doesn't get another man. Malamar. So it's just Guzma, Mysterious Treasure, and Lunala Prism Star in his hand. And I think his decision here is like, do I go for the Lele here with the Mysterious Treasure? Because uh, i got to get another Malamar out before this Inke gets knocked out. Gustavo taking a look at his discard. He plays one Tapu Lele GX. Melissa's prize is why he's well, kind of stumbling here. Well, that's the thing. He would have gotten it last turn, right, with the yep. Ultra Ball. Instead, he had to get the Mimikyu and filch for two cards. Mysterious Treasure Way, Lunala Prism. Oh, man. Oh, no. So, yeah, so that has to, has to be what it is. His, Lele, his one Lele is prize, so he's not able to really advance right now. So I think what he's hoping here is that he can get the Oxus active, take a few punches, and uh, let him take the one prize, and hopefully between those jet punches, he can find a way out of this dead draw. Perhaps going to play that uh, Guzma for a stalling effect. We're going to have to look up real quick the name of Marshadow GX attack because we typically don't see that often here. Marshadow always being used for that awesome. Uh, Let me tell you that, Jeff. Attack. Shadow Punch. 30. This attacks damage. And it's not affected by resistance. resistance. So he doesn't All get right. the weakness effect of it, but anything like a Zorark with a second resistance would not have been affected. C60 damage. Plopping down on that Buzzwool GX. And the last card in Emery's hand, as we know, was a Cynthia. So no shortage of uh, cards and resources on Emery's side of the board. Representing, as you see on his T-shirt there, as he leaned forward, Nerd Rage, Nerd Rage Gaming, making them proud here today, fighting the good fight. So if we can see a ten. Rock Ruff and a Beast Energy here, we can start seeing some uh, knockouts on the Battle Marks on bench right now. Um, through McCargo, be able to smooth over and draw into stuff. He may be able to get there, but I'm not able to see what exactly is in his hand. I see an Ultra Ball, so we can't get to the Lycan Rock. He might already have it in hand on the edge right there. That's the Buzzle GX, sorry. So um, he has a lot of different options here. Well, so I think that's a Gold Rescue Stretcher. And a Guzma going down to the Ultra Ball. Maybe a Lycan Rock GX on its way for that Bloodthirsty Eyes ability. Lock it in, Jeff. That's what he's selecting. All right, so this is what we're going to probably see here, actually. He's going to bloodthirsty eyes of the non-damage Malamar. That way he could hit the, hit the active one for the 50 damage, jet punch to the bench one, put 60 on it now, and now we can get a two-for-one special the following turn with a double jet punch. Calamari on special today, baby. Round 10, Memphis, Tennessee. We're going to see if Emery can cash in on that particular strategy. And is that a lily in hand for the following turn? Uh, wow, yes, he's ready to go right now. Uh, brings the damage one up, interesting enough. All right, so two for one special of the Calamari not on the menu today. Uh, Emery has a different line, and he's going for that friend ball. I'm really perplexed about this decision here. I'm really curious as to uh, what Marshadow presents as a threat to him versus the engine of Gustavo's deck. Uh, I'm willing to agree there, and obviously either Malamar, uh, he has no way of knowing that obviously Gustavo has Guzma in hand. Uh, however, having more damage on Malamars is always a, always a good thing. All right, so what attack is he going to be using? Filch, with? baby. Fil <laughs> Let's go. We got Mark Shadow GX. 
Look, you, you have to, you have, you have to give Gustavo credit. He is, he, he is doing whatever he, he, he can, can to get, to get out of this. This is amazing right now. Shadow hunt. Smooth over for escape rope, if I'm not mistaken. And that Lillian hand is going to put that baby. And I just right wish right now that he could have put that 30 on the other Malamar, or I brought the other Malamar because. Because, yeah, because now, over. He, now he would have at least guaranteed himself a knockout on one Malamar. At least one Malamar at the very least. Oh, I man. guess technically well, he still, still has get the, it. He's still going to get one Malamar because the, the best jet punch. But even then, it's just like he could more than likely off this Lily hit another bloodthirsty eyes and really be able to take the double knockout here. But I guess he's really just does not like the pivot that Marshadow brings to Gustavo's deck. But he could pivot with any Pokemon. Uh, I mean, he's he is just chunking in there for 30, and taking a knockout on the Malamar on the bench, Gustavo off the top. What was it? Psychic energy down to Deoxys. Uh, so he's going to be able to uh, second recharge and get a knockout on his Buzzle GX now. And I'm Cynthia. still wish that Malamar was digging out. Just looking down that clean Malamar, certainly not a positive situation. However, that Cynthia might be just in time to allow Gustavo to turn the page here and uh, start getting on the offensive with this Deoxys. Cynthia coming down, uh, Gustavo one mile more. Yeah, I mean, while it's still looking fairly well for Emery here, um, there aren't any additional in case outs, and he's already used one rescue stretcher. Um, so he's not in a terrible spot. Um, so he's still, he's still able to push forward here. Gustavo going to be able to tie the game up here with the Power Blast from Deoxys, knock out on the active Buzzle GX. Um, but he does have a, a buzz, baby buzz on bench to be able to hit him back with a sledgehammer. We see a nest ball, maybe another Inke, maybe getting that set up going. If there's no Inkes on his bench right now, I want to see another Bloodthirsty Eyes on that Malamar on bench to take away this board right now. Yes, he'll probably get a return knockout from the Deoxys here, but he will not have any second region charges to his name. At least put him one step further away to, to have it. Um, we do see that Nest Ball is going to grab an Inke, and Gustavo giving it a hard, uh, hard look here, and finally electing to lock it in. Another squid finds its way to the plate. NK coming down. Gustavo really weighing his options here. We, we're pretty sure we're going to see uh, the second recharge to the Deoxys right now uh, for the knockout on Buzz. But I think he's just kind of making sure, going through each piece that he has and figure out, you know, what all he can get for this next turn. Uh, another another NK coming NK. down. He's insulating himself very well. It looks like the time of limiting the squids on board has passed for Emery. So now, now we're back to that stage of, okay, I can't deal with what's – causing the problem, so yeah. now I just got to deal with the problem. Putting out small fires in the business world, I believe is how we call that. Yeah, he's not even going to be able to get the, the, you know, the courteous jet punch to the bench on Marshadow now because, you know, everything's kind of caught with speed now. I really, really wish that, you know, he took off, took advantage of that lunch special down the road and took out both the Calamaris. Yep. Uh, Emery looking to go to Home Depot, get himself a sledgehammer. Going to take a knockout on Deoxys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that one. What, Ace, are you an Ace Hardware guy, Lowe's? <laughs> I'm more of a Lowe's guy. Yeah, I'm more right, of a Lowe's guy. True Value? I think that's a Northeast uh, <laughs> no, no, or Northeast United States hardware store. Shout out to True Value. <laughs> <laughs> we out here struggling right now. Sledgehammer going to Hope Depot. There's two for one special on the board right now. We are at time here, folks. Our hardware uh, store discussion made us miss the clock. Turn zero is on Emery. Well, there's only uh, – he's going to have zero and turn two. Emery can't take uh – Emery can't take four prizes. However, there are two additional GXs on board for Gustavo's take knockouts on. So, there is, there is an out here for Gustavo, but he, that's in the form of – Prismatic burst on the Lele for KO, um, and maybe the same mirrored attack on the Lycanroc GX. Gustavo's Tapu Lele being prized really allowed Emery to, to stay afloat in this game. Emery has to be breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. 
got away with one because of all the Malamars prized in game two. And Gustavo's Tapu Lele GX prized in game three just completely crippled his setup. And we saw that when he was forced to ultra ball for a mimic you to filch. The filch and then even do it again through Shadow yeah. uh, Mars Shadow GX. So really Bench out Mar here Shadow, on retreat, the struggle bus. Try to filch. get there and finally hits the Cynthia to get all these NKs on board. But we're at turn zero right now, so it's just a tad bit late here. But we'll see if you want Savage get a, get a few Malamars back out and play that strategy as we're saying here to take out the two GXs on Emery side. See a knockout like and rock GX. Uh, <laughs> Emery shaking it on screen. You wish you would have had that just a, a couple turns earlier. Inke in the promotion spot. Gustavo just trying to navigate not losing here. I don't think he... Uh well, fortunate enough there, I don't think there's no way for Emery to take the game here. So right now, I was just trying to see if there's any way he could do it on his end. Three prizes to four, two knockouts for Gustavo. Emery could take one more. I mean, Gustavo is at four prizes, and there are two mm -hmm. GX Pokemon on Emery's side of the board. Uh, that Lycanroc and those, that Tapu Lele is really what Gustavo is going to try and uh, go on the hunt for with his squid army and see what he can do. However, uh, another Malamar might be the place to start there. Absolutely there. So Acrobite coming down. Go to probably see a rescue stretcher. Uh, looks like he has the, the awkward, uh, what do I do with this type of Acrobite, as you yep. see by his hand gesture. Yep. Decisions, again, as I mentioned yesterday, my favorite Acrobikes, Acrobike for Acrobike into Acrobike. Let's go. Oh, just a no, pass. just so, a pass. One piece away because he has a three Malamars. Thirsty eyes on the Mar Shadow Choice Band. So, I mean, he has a sledgehammer knockout here as well. Yep. He's going to be able to run uh, run back that, that value there that he got with the sledgehammer the previous turn, bite it back. It looks like we might be seeing a, a draw here uh, as this is turn two for Emery. Um, he will get a sledgehammer knockout right now on this Marshadow GX. However, uh, won't be able to get to another turn to take out anything on his side field. Uh, while he does probably have game uh, set up right now. Uh, yeah, it looks and like this one goes to a draw. Um, Emery can't be too, too upset with how he was able to stay in that game because um, – Conventional wisdom says he takes the L there. Absolutely there. I mean, but we see before, right? Yesterday we saw uh, James Arnold with the metal deck versus Ho -Oh Salazzle. And instant thought was, all right, now this is going to be a Womp City, and, and James Arnold's going to pull it out. And then this one through, you know, turn two or game two, not able to get those Malamars out. And now game three, missing his single Lele to get going, really gave uh, Embry the chance here to catch up into the game and really progress the state. That's a great point. I, Gustavo sitting at 9-0-1. Um, obviously would have liked to pick up the W in what would have been a favorable matchup there historically. Uh, can't be too upset. Still in prime position to find himself into top eight. And now Emery one step closer himself, jumping up to 9-1. and one. So if you will stick with us for just a moment, we will be right back with the man that completed day one with no marks on his sheet in negative fashion. Gustavo Wada, we'll see you in a second. Welcome back to the post round 10 interview. Kirk Dubay here with Gustavo Wada. Hi guys. <laughs> I must say first and foremost, congratulations. Nine and zero on day one, fantastic record. Have to be Thanks. happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy about it. <laughs> without, uh, without talking too much about the negative that was round 10, favorable matchup. We saw some really tough prizes game two. Yeah. Tapu Lele seemed to be prized game three. Um, Talk us through a little bit what you're thinking in game three when you have to grab the Mimikyu and start using Filch to just draw cards. Uh, like, if game two, I just coop, but if it's game three, so I've already lost or win the games. So I start to Filch and try to hit uh, Cynthia or something like that. If I start two or three prizes, uh, uh, back in this game, I can still come back. So there is a hope. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw that we had a you, you just you, it almost seemed like you were just missing just a little bit more time and you were kind of uh, going to turn the corner because you did eventually get that Cynthia. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe if you had just a bit more time on the clock, you would have been able to find a way to win? No, I don't know. It really depends from my opponent's hands because uh, in, the, in, my, in, my, in turn one, 
I need to hit good man. So I moon eclipse the Lele and then I have a Marchado with three with three energies. Mm -hmm. Then if I hit the good my key wasn't prize, I can pretty much burst the Lycan Rock. But that that was my only chance of winning this game. I got you, and that's kind of what you were looking for in the acrobike, I think, in the last yeah. turns of the game. Okay, to make that happen. Um, let me uh, go into game two real quick. Uh, it kind of seemed like you searched through your deck and all of a sudden you scooped up your cards. What did you see or what did you need that you didn't have access to to, uh, to continue playing that game? I didn't, I didn't have t how to knock out the hit battle in that turn. And I, hadn't, I didn't hit the supporter, and so... He's gonna be three prize ahead, and I didn't know if I gonna knock out the bottle in next turn. So I prefer just scoop and go to game three. Yeah, to have time. So absolutely, with your nine and zero record, we know you're used to winning and wanting to pick up wins, not draws. So we certainly appreciate that. Um, you're still looking very good for top eight. What what would you like to play against next round? Another bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Another bottle there, and I, I think we could kind of assume that. Gustavo, best of luck. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Great day one. Congratulations <laughs> on that. And uh, I have a very strong feeling we'll see you in top eight. I hope so. <laughs> Thanks everybody, and we'll be back with round eleven action here shortly.